All right, Golf WRX, my name is Johnny Wonder. I am here at Scottsdale National. It's a beautiful setting. I'm here with uh, PXG's Dave Cunningham, and we're going to talk about Gen 3 just awesomeness. Good to have you. Yeah, yeah, good to be here. So kind of the fun thing about this job is you get to see things, you know, for the first time. I have not seen the Gen 3s yet. They're kind of keeping me away from this table, but uh, we're going to do an iron fitting, talk about gapping a little bit, and uh, Dave's an expert, so. We've got this unbelievable display that we bring on on golf course, green grass, uh, mobily, and we have 300 plus shafts, all of our equipment, obviously TrackMan based, and we go through, you know, extensive fitting where we're gonna, you know, create those gaps perfectly, and uh, we've got everything we need to get you in the best set possible. So theoretically, I'll be pretty cooked by the time this thing's over with. You will, I, I like to manage <laughs> how many swings you take, but we'll, we'll, get it, we'll get it right. Well, I'm excited to be here. We're at Scottsdale National. I'm excited to do the fitting, so uh, let's get into it. So this set makeup you have now looks a little flat to me and it's basically off our standard length. No, I mean, I've always, I've been in a 38 inch five iron type thing yep. forever. So that's kind of where I, when I'm used to, I guess. Right. But like my miss typically is a little left or a little bit of a drop kick. Okay. Like, you know, if you'll see that kind of- Just get a little stuck. Get a little stuck. Anything in particular I need to know about as far as working on your game right now? No. Okay. <laughs> no. Where do you land on blending sets? Like having like a chunky five iron, you know? Sure. No, I've, you know, obviously visual to the player is very important. Okay. But at the end of the day, I want, you know, performance is what I'm based off of. Right. Based off of. So. All right. Take a look at some numbers. Okay. If we're looking at, you know, obviously we like to look at launch angle. We like to look at spin. We look, like to look at, obviously when we're comparing clubs, we're gonna look at ball speed. Ball speed's gonna be indicative, as right. we all know, center contact pretty much. So, you know, with our technology, we're gonna see a little more explosiveness off our, especially off this Gen 3 product. Okay. Um, but again, you know, spin wise, you're right at 7,000 on that particular last shot. You know, you're carrying it about 160. So spin, launch, Landing angle, peak height, uh, actually launch and, and, and height are perfect. You know, those are two baseline numbers, I would say. 18 launch on a 7 iron and 90 height. Uh, what is it, a standard you mentioned? 165 is my, okay. yeah, when I'm humming, like when yep. I'm normal. So let's go ahead and uh, let's build you up. Uh, we'll start with Gen 3 and okay. we'll get you rolling there. We're going to start out with our ST, 100% milled uh, blade. Our smallest uh, performance blade that we've come out with over the, the five years we've been around. So. Uh, we'll start with uh, apples to apples, okay. throwing in the same shaft that you're in. The rumor on tour is actually these are bladey, but they're actually pretty forgiving. They do. They, blade, guess, right? they definitely have some forgiveness, okay. And uh, but probably the prettiest iron out there. Believe it or not, first time actually hitting a ball with an ST, so. Good there. These things feel good. So with these ones, like the, the, the a couple of the comments from the guys on tour with the turf interaction with these things was really, really good. Correct. Which is kind of the big selling point, I think. For sure. You know, our seven iron loft on this ST product is at 33. So it's a little bit closer so, to. So it's a little closer to. Reality. Old school. <laughs> Remember back in the day when a seven iron was 36? That's right. Let's see if I can hit one low. But with all technology, with the, you know, with the weighting in the back of the golf club, ball gets up in the air so much easier these days that what enables I'm, us to go stronger lofted. What I'm noticing with these, and the funny thing is with all PXG product, if I hit them a little thin, they feel like almost like a flush shot. Like I don't get that dang. Right. And again, that's just, you know, us using the best materials and the feels like nothing else out there. Like that was a bottom groove low. Yep. But for me, pretty good. Normal circumstances, I'm losing, losing five or six yards of carry out of that. I'd imagine that probably carried pretty close to. Right. Yeah. Let's hit one more. We'll go back and then we'll, we'll get you in a in the T blade next. That turf interaction is unbelievable. Though. Yeah. I mean, it's very clean. All right. 
Let's take a look good. at some numbers. And the good thing is, is I'm not, whenever I get fit, I always want to have a day where I actually do hit it normally, like a little bit thin, a little right. bit squirrely. So it's more so indicative. So it's more, more yeah. normal. So the good thing is I've hit, if I hit 10 balls there, six of them were normal. Right. A little skinny, skinny center. Yeah, so if we, we take a look here, you know, again, right in that same ballpark is what you, with your, with your other product. Uh, one, on average, 160 carry. Okay. Um, spin rates right at 6,900. Ball speed jumped a little bit off that yeah. ST. I mean, with average with your other product was right around 115 and a half. This is at 116 and a half. So, so the funny thing is though, so if I'm looking at this shot right here, for example, the Correct. last one that I hit a little skinny. Yes. So it's, it's, it's subtle, but like I usually is about 115 ball speed on that, right. that shot. And the carry distance is usually about 150, 253. So, you know, there's a little bit of, and this is, this is a bladier iron than For sure. And we're I'm not really, now. again, comparing apples to apples shaft wise, but from a loft perspective, those are extremely more lofted right. than, uh, than this one than is. this one is here. Okay. So let's move into uh, our new Gen 3 uh, T head. Okay. And if you have a, if you have somebody, so say for example, I've told you I've played like a, a C taper S plus for a long right. time. At what point do you say, Hey, look like that shaft isn't, I'm not seeing what I want to see with that shaft. You might want to try something else. Or do you rely on the client's feel? Like, how do you? No. So I'll, I'll look at numbers. I looked at, you know, obviously with your current setup, your numbers are pretty darn good. Right. And it's going to vary in different heads. Sure. So that's not, that's just a baseline that we okay. like to start with. We look like to get you looking at a head that, you know, that you visually you like to look at. Right. And then we'll start dialing in oh, uh, shaft based off my recommendation. Okay. So this is the T. This is the T, Gen 3 T. So this is for your Billy Horschel, Zach Johnsons of the world. This is their stick. Good there. Yeah. So what makes this iron special is the impact reactor. And it's basically a dual core inside there. Okay. This is new technology for us. We, in the past, we've had just one, one core in there. Okay. Well, they feel a little, I mean, I, oddly enough, they actually feel a little softer than the other tees off the face. Not, and they're still hot, but they don't, they have the, a little bit more of a marshmallow -y feel. And, that, and that's that impact reactor okay. uh, technology that we're using. It enables that face to really store the energy and kind of explode off there. But at the same time, you know, with that explosiveness, you're not going to get a, a, a ball that just all of a sudden jumps. Well, no, that's, that, that was, so the, the feedback, whenever I talk to the tour guys, the reason they like these is because they're hot, but you don't get lightsaber shots. Correct. They just fly on you. Correct. And that's always the worry with a hot face is that it's going to jump on out of the, out of the rough or whatever. For sure. So even though this is stronger lofted than that T, we're, you know, noticeably seeing higher launch. Yeah. Higher launch, but not spinny. Correct. Yeah. Let's see a work a shot here, maybe down a little bit. Yeah, I'll try to hit one down here. On command there, that's good. These things feel good. They're not, I mean, for the folks at home guys, like it's a it's a T club, it's a tour tour design club. This is not a hard golf club to hit. Not at all. Like not at, at all. all. And I'm I the truth be told, I'm like a moderate to above average iron player. These are pretty easy to hit. So if I'm up at 6.30 a.m. going out to the club with the boys. Like, I'm not scared to hit this thing. Like, that was just a smoothie. So, from a visual per, uh, perspective, the, the ST compared to the T, give me a little bit of your feedback. Just a little more confidence. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm, I like to feel like I have a little bit of help down there. Sure. Those are a little bit more precision. They are. Um, like, I could probably handle those in like a nine iron or a wedge. Right. But six, seven iron would be a little squirrely. Sure. Sure. Um, we, I still want to have fun too. I don't hit balls like I used to, but th this is from an optic standpoint, this is right in my pocket right. for a seven iron. For sure. Um, it's, it looks literally like what I'm playing now. Let's progress into the P head, see okay. what you think there. And uh, then we'll start looking at shaft options. So Johnny, this is the P iron now. Okay. You're going to see a little longer length from heel to toe. Yep. A little, a little higher, a little higher toe too. It looks like. Yep. Guys, and then okay. a little more offset. Okay. Oh, wow. Good there. So as we're hit, as we've been hitting 
all irons here. I'm looking at different pattern for lie angle. Right. I'm looking at length. Yeah, this, this, I mean, this, I don't know what the length is on the seven iron, but it feels a little long. That's 37 and a quarter there. Okay, so it's about, it's about a quarter, quarter inch longer I mean, than mine. Right. Really good there. Tell you what, I'm in them straight. So dispersion wise, we haven't seen many left shots, you know? No. Let's see if I can find a good lie here. There you go. Never heard that before, trying to find a good lie at Scottsdale National. <laughs> Okay, so that's a good example. So that, that's my thin, high, no spinny shot. I mean, really want to know the numbers on that one. So you're gonna really trap one. Good. Just a little push, but yeah. But as we've seen from a ball speed perspective, we went from the ST to the T to the P now, and obviously they're one degree different. Um, ball speed's jumping. You know, we were at 116, 117 with the ST. 119 with the the T head. Now we're about two. And now we're about 122 ish with the 121 ish with the P head. Like that was chunky, but yeah. Yeah. So for me, like from, from the optic standpoint, like I would, in the seven iron, I'd probably go to the T. Right. Just so it's more. And then maybe my, then, progress then, into the longer irons right. with, the, with the P. Okay. So let's uh, you know now that we've visually looked at the, the three options for you. Right. Um, let's go ahead and look at some shafts that may even outperform what you're currently playing. Okay, cool. Yeah. So Johnny, with that uh, P head, we obviously see a little bit more distance. Okay. Um, 164 carry there, averaging almost 165. Spin rates come down a little bit. Actually, peak height, peak height has gone up. Launch angle stayed the same, um, but peak height definitely has gone up a little bit, which is not a bad thing. And you said you mentioned you hit majority of those a little thin. Yeah, so as, yeah. A, so as a fitter, you're looking at that the seven iron and the T head, for example, I can hit it down a little bit more. It's not too much of a difference between the P and the T. So correct. As a fitter, you're like, okay, that's probably the shorter irons. He probably wants something along those lines. Right. And, okay. and again, get, getting your feedback from a visual standpoint, right. sounds like that T was very comfortable looking and you felt more comfortable workability wise. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, cool. So that's what I look at. All right. Yep. So now let's try some shafts. So based off the numbers, I'll, I know what all these shafts do. Right. Um, we're going to go ahead and, you know, basically streamline the process. Gotcha. We have so many options. Uh, again, looking at where you're at as far as a spin sure. spin rate and a launch angle, I know what shafts to kind of go to. Right. There's probably going to be and a And based handful. on what I have in my bag, too, you can kind of narrow Correct. it down. Yeah. Correct. So we'll go to the uh, T-head, which visually was most appealing to you. So we'll okay. start there. You know, the, the with a fitting culture, obviously, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of access to, to matrices, but what I've noticed about the, the PXG thing is you guys will spend, and I noticed this with Joel, who's another fitter for PXG, and, and people I've worked with, you guys will kind of like subtly just kind of grind and grind and grind and search and search and search until it's just For sure. I mean, perfect. Our, you don't feel cheated. The experience we want to provide is, you know, we want to go through and make sure we, every option is, is, is out there for right. you. So we get, get you in the right fit and uh, you perform and play the best you can. Right. So. So we'll go DG Tour Issue S4, which you've mentioned that you've had some success yeah, with I've in the past. So played it for 20 years until about a year ago. And for the folks at home, like for the non gearheads, this shaft is pretty much a low spin, low launch. Correct. Heavier, heavier it's profile. Been around. Been around for years. It has been. Automatically just, you know, you can yeah. tell. Very equivalent to that first shaft we had out. That one felt good. So comparing from a feel perspective, obviously the first one we hit, which was comfortable for you. This feels better than the one I had before. Does it? Okay, yeah. good. Let's, uh, let's hit one more. We'll take a look at those numbers and then. Like I'll try and reef on one. Okay. Yeah, cause I, don't, I usually don't swing very hard in my irons, right. but I'll try to make a big full swing here. Good there. But that's, I, I know that that ball's not gonna go that way. Right. Whereas those kind of shafts in the middle yeah. definitely had the left Like end. this feels far superior to the rest of them. Perfect. 
take a look at those numbers. So like like that those numbers right there on a thin shot, yep. that's all day long. Because exactly. I know I know if I'm playing decently, I'll, that's going to carry 165. Exactly. Yep. And no matter what, my 7 iron has to carry 160 based on my gapping. Has right. to carry 160. So right. there, there it is right there. And speaking of gapping, obviously, you know, it's obviously probably the most important part of my job. We got to get you so you don't have a club in your bag that's, you know, obsolete. Not functional. Exactly. Yeah. Um, we want to make sure that, you know, your gapping is, is correct from, you know, your longest iron, which you're playing a 5 iron is your long iron, yeah. longest iron going into your hybrid or fairway wood. Right. So the way that my, I got my bag, and I've been doing this for a while, is I actually go driver, three wood, seven wood. So I have like a 20 degree wood, okay. five iron, because I have five wedges in my bag. Right. So I go, you know, 46, 50, 55, 60, 64. 64 I saw that. Um, and I just, I, I won't switch out of that because right. I'm so used to that setup. Right. Um, so I have to find where all the secret sauces is between the seven wood and the five. Iron. Five wood goes too far. Yeah. Seven wood goes, carries 220. And so you like you like the length of that seven wood as opposed to a hybrid? It's a 40, or? yeah, I can't hit hybrids. Okay, okay. Uh, 41 and a quarter, like seven wood okay. is what I have now. Yep. And it's if I hit it skinny, it goes 220. If I smoke it, it goes 230. Every set is specific to that person. Um, so you carry a bunch of wedges. We need to make sure that gap on the higher end is, is tight and makes sense. So like for me, I'm always looking for, I always go to a little bit more game improvement on the five iron. Correct. Because I want it to feel like there's a transition between my seven wood into like a blady six iron or whatever it would be. Right. So uh, we got so this the is, Yeah, this is the XP. This is a okay. new new um, Gen 3 XP. Okay. Extreme performance. And um, you're going to love the, the feel and the forgiveness on this. Okay. But again, it's all about finding that correct gap. So we're looking for about a 205-ish here. Obviously got a little bigger sole down there. Yep. You know, that turf interaction. That was good there. What that one carry? Uh, 204. 204. 204. Okay, so that's and that's a that's a normal strike. A little thin. Yep. So that's thin. So like we talked about playing to your misses. Correct. So if I'm hitting this thin, and it still carries 200. Exactly, and that's what we do at PXG is is you know play to the. We want to fit to the misses. Right. Uh, our miss hits are, are where we, you know, our, our our product really stands out. You know, as I'm fitting, outfitting here on the tee. Um, you know, I'm going to fit that person into the right golf club. We're not going to. We're not out here giving you know lessons. Right. And uh, so forth. But it's important just to, you know, work with that person, get them in the right golf club, uh, to you know for them to perform the best. So at this point, after the whole fitting, so we're sort of like seven, seven, eight, nine in the tees, Correct. and then you know six iron and a P or whatever, and then we it, it's sort of something more forgiving in the in the five iron. Type. Yeah, I would, you know, in your particular situation, my recommendation would be tees and seven iron down, okay. and then I'd go six five in the P's. Okay. I think that just gets a, a little bit bulky on the bottom for your particular move into okay. the, into the turf. And where do you land on? So I've always played like a wedgie pitching wedge yep so it's you know like a you know there's either the set pitching wedge or the i've always played like the wedge set right pitching wedge where do you land on that are you a big advocate of like matching the whole setup or do you do you mind no i don't i don't mind that however we do need to make sure with our technology going from that nine iron to that more traditional wedge right you're going to see a, a little bit more of a gap so, so you're not hitting your pitching wedge 125 and your nine iron 160 type <laughs> correct <laughs> okay. correct so we want to make sure again that's just an loft issue. I mean, if, if that visual the, the, of the wedge, you know, you want it to match the set, right. we can adjust that loft a little bit for you as well. I mean, that's what we do. It's all custom. Okay. So, um, again, you know, you, you're, the, you're the player. You're going to want to look down at what you are comfortable with and right. what looks good to you. So, uh, either way there, I would, I would just we'd evaluate a gap and, and figure it out. So I'll say this. So the, the, this is what this is what it feels like for the PXG fitting, and, and obviously we're here at Scottsdale National, so it's elevated. But ultimately, like when these guys show up at your doorstep, it's like this. It's like it's a non-hurried environment. They're going to grind you down until you find exactly what you need. And uh, yes, there's a lot of fitting companies out there. There's a lot of fitting experiences. They're all really, really good. But the PXG thing is a PXG thing. It's a little bit different. Um, and the nice thing about it is it's so sort of in a vacuum. So the whole PXG kind of culture, everything kind of bleeds into your fitting. Uh, which I always thought was a fun experience. It adds a little bit of a uh, little cachet to what you guys do. For sure. No, it's uh, it's fun to help help every type of player get into the right equipment. It doesn't matter if you're a scratch player, 
to a higher handicap. We we can. Uh, it's great to hear people come back to us right. and say, "Wow, I've dropped my handicap five shots." That's, that's very rewarding for us as fitters. And how how would somebody somebody wants to sign up for a PXG fitting? Where do they find you? Yeah, we can get you can go on the website. Okay. Um, obviously, call into headquarters. Uh, we've got mobile fitters around the country. Okay. And um, we're there at your uh, you know what makes the most sense as far as efficiency and, and out there at, at all the different clubs around the country. Cool. Well, I want to thank Dave Cunningham for PXG. Thanks, that was Johnny. a lot of fun. Um, I'm going to be blasting what I ended up with. It's on the screen right here. You'll see all my specs and everything. Uh, thank you to Golf WRX for uh, sending me out here. And uh, what, a, what an experience, man. Cool. Glad really cool. It. Gen yeah. 3 stuff's hot, guys. You're going to love it. Thanks.